Hi everyone, this is Richard. In this video, we're going to go over custom structural directives. Um, so custom structural directive, if we remember, it's a structural directive is a directive that tells us whether or not an element should be added or not. So it will either add an element or not add an element to your to the DOM or to the web page itself. Okay. Now, if you think about it, that's an all or nothing proposition, right? You're either going to add the element, it's just going to be displayed, or it's not. But sometimes it's not that simple. For example, what if you had a web page and it was like a restaurant on the web page? And on the restaurant, if you had, if you had a child who was 12 or under, then you would give them a kid's menu. Okay, so a kid's menu would render, so it would be displayed. There would be a little icon or something like that or a different menu if you were under 12. But if you were over 21, it would render a alcoholic beverage menu right inside of here. So it's kind of one of those things where, yes, um, it's an all or nothing idea, but at the same time, there are some times when you want to put logic into your elements to render when you want them under certain circumstances, right? There's some logic behind it rather than just all true or false. But in Angular, things are very modular. So you like to keep things in the same system as much as possible. So in other words, if you had a built-in structural directive right here, in the same class, you could always just make put some logic there that would say, okay, under this circumstance, it would be true. Under that circumstance, it would be false. You could do something like that, but then it wouldn't be as modular, right? So that you can't just reuse that particular directive over and over again. But this is where we want to keep it modular so we could keep the logic locally in the directive in and of itself. So we can, again, use it over and over again. So let's keep that in mind. So I'm go what I'm going to do is create, in this template, two div elements. I don't know why I created two. One would do. And I put at, uh, I'm sorry, um, a asterisk display this. That's the name of the directive, of course. And then it'll equal to something, that variable something. And then it'll print this out right here. Don't forget in the directives, the name of the directive, which is going to be right down here, then the at directive decorator, and the selector will be display this. So of course, that's the one right inside of here, display this. And so asterisk display this means it'll activate this directive. And again, one last time, sorry to be repetitive, some directive, it will be imported in the directive section. Now we see two different new classes right inside of here. And if you remember from previous videos, this is dependency injection, right? So the um, classes that are built into the system injects their members, in, injects their members, um, it, it, it um, injects uh, their variables, let me put it that way, inside of this particular class. And so, what we'll have to do is look at some of these. These are automatically built in. What's a view container? Let's go over that first. A view container, basically, it is a DOM element. So basically, it's a built-in DOM element. Whenever you see some, some selector and it happens to be a directive, it'll build a DOM element right inside of there. And what it will actually do, what the view container is, it's a, um, a specifically DOM element. It's sort of like a div element in the sense that it doesn't actually show anything on the screen, but it cre it's basically a placeholder. And what you can do is use this in order to add or not add DOM elements. Okay, so if we take a look here, view container dot, let's see some of the methods right here. The create component. So you could create a component. I don't know how to actually use something like that or create embedded view. So what we're doing is by create embedded view, we're actually allowing the um, a an element to be rendered, which is what we're going to use onto the screen. OK, so as part of your web app. So it's a means of getting your element to be displayed. And by the way, just like I think I mentioned this already, it, it, by displaying these elements, they are siblings to the view container. They're not children. They're siblings to the view container element itself. And we have to just keep that in mind for the future. I don't think it's going to make a big deal right now, but just if you're going to be trying to manipulate it further on in the future, we'll have to keep that in mind. 
template ref. What's a template ref? Well, if we remember the element ref, that's basically just a, um, what is it? It's just a wrapper for the element itself. A template ref, actually, it's a wrapper for the template. And so what, what, what is a template? Well, a template, I refer to the template tag itself. So the template tag, if, if you don't remember, it is a element. I didn't go over this a lot because honestly, I don't even didn't really even know much about this. It's a, it's an element that if you have it on your web app or your web page, the when it, the page loads up, it does not actually show the contents of the template. But you if it's there that you can access that if you're going to use JavaScript or Dart or whatever, you can actually get this information in the template tag. to render, okay? So you can get this information to actually render if you actually um, use JavaScript or again, Dart in order to do it, but otherwise it will not render in the very beginning. So what template ref is, is basically it's a wrapper for the template itself. What's the template? The template is the display this, right? So it's the display this, which is also in here. So the template's not referring to this template. It's referring to specifically this template which contains this element itself. Okay, so I, I hope that's clear. That's a little bit confusing to me. So we're getting this. It's just an element here. I'm grabbing this so I should be able to use the view container and add the template and actually view the template through the view container itself. Okay, because again, this is the DOM element that you're able to show sibling elements or add elements onto the DOM. And this is one of the elements, the template, which will not be displayed initially because that's the characteristic of it, but it will be displayed again. Why you can't actually just view container and add the element on top of there, I haven't figured that out yet. Maybe in a future video, okay? So here is now our logic. At input decorator, it's going to be in the at directive, okay? So to make it nice and modular. At input, I'm going to say set display this right here, set display this, and I'm going to use this list something. Okay. Notice the scoping. I always have to keep this in mind. Scoping something, it's in a different class, but because we go way up here, right? Display this equals something, that something is accessible to us down here. Okay. So list something. If something, here's our logic position zero equals one, then I'm going to say view container dot create embedded view and view the template, which was previously not seen. Otherwise, view container dot clear. Okay. Let's see if that works. So this is something, this is something else. So it actually does work by displaying these because this logic is true. What if I was going to say this equals 10 should be false. Therefore, it's going to go here, view container dot clear. So it's basically going to show you nothing. Okay. Just to show you it didn't break or something like that. So I hope that clarifies it a little bit in terms of making, it's a very, very simplified version. As time goes by, I hope we can learn about this a little bit more and more detail. Um, simplified version of a custom structural directive um, and the logic behind why you would want to create it. Okay, thank you.